Right, now then, fellas, uh, I am unashamedly uh, not a fan of Olympic football. I think it's preposterous that you've got to gerrymander football into a competition, which is basically athletics-based, and now you've got to literally go hunting around the country for volunteers to, uh, to join the team, and everybody's frightened that all their passports will be taken away, and United has won if they start playing from countries other than England. So to me, it's a fiasco. It comes, therefore, as no surprise to me to learn that there are 1.5 million tickets still available for the football tournament. I know they sell in much greater volume than a lot of the others, and there's, they're outside of the Olympic Stadium, i.e. stadiums all over the country. Nevertheless, I do think it's a fiasco that's being exposed. I have up on the Skype wall now, Alex is a Wimbledon fan, and he's got his own view about Olympic football. Alex, good evening to you. Good evening, how's it going? Very well indeed. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Alex, tell me this. Are you a fan or otherwise of Olympic football? What does it say to you? I mean, I'm indifferent on it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not buying tickets myself. Um, but I think, I think the big problem is they've, they've missed the point completely with what they could have done with this. At the end of the day, one and a half million tickets unsold. The, the pricing strategy that they've gone with is to kind of pitch to diehard football fans. Mm. But diehard football fans are going to be away at the European Championships not long before. They're not going to want to go to both. I think what they should have been doing here is pitching to families. They should have been doing all tickets for families. It's a chance. I mean, they did it in the Commonwealth Games in 2002. They did really good family tickets for the cycling. Mm. Uh, the cycling rate went up in Manchester by like 70% for the few years afterwards. And I think what they've got wrong here is if they pitched the families, there was a chance for, say, a million young kids. And what's great about it is it's not just being shown in London. It would have been a million kids up and down the country getting to see a decent standard of football and hopefully being inspired to take it up themselves. So I really think they've got it wrong. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, a brilliant idea if they'd have gone into yeah. the schools mm -hmm. around yeah, I do. where all the games are being I played do. and said, look, if you bring your mum and dad, you can have a ticket, like a tenner a ticket. Yeah. And it would, but what will happen is I think they've sold 800,000 tickets, haven't they? Yes. There's 1.5 million. When the draw's made in April, yeah. like, that means more tickets because you don't, uh, what some players, per, sorry, some people won't want to buy a ticket until yeah. they know who's playing at what grounds. Yeah. And then I don't think football should be, I'm with you, I don't think football's Olympic sport. No. But trust me, this country, mm. once mm. a tournament takes off, mm. even if they go on general sale, yeah. most of the grounds will be three quarters full. And then if England, oh sorry, Great Britain yeah. do well and they get through to qualify and they get into quarters and semis, the groundswell mm -hmm. in this country, there'll be euphoria. If we get low to the latter stages, the pressure yeah. will ramp mm. it up. It'll yeah. be front page news and yeah. then it will take over because we are a football nation. Yeah, we are a football nation. A Alex, do you not think there's, a, there's a, um, a chance that because it's being pushed out of London quite deliberately, so much of what we do in this country is London-centric, that it will appeal to people in places like Coventry and Newcastle and Glasgow? Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's what they should have gone with from the start. They should yeah. have really, you know, made, sort of brought this home that there's a chance for people in Scotland, Wales, the north of the country to get involved in this. But I, I just, I think they've gone about it with the wrong strategy. Um, I mean, and as you said, obviously the draw hasn't been made yet. I think people are a bit reluctant to buy tickets. Looking at the teams that are qualified, there is a chance if you buy a ticket, you could end up getting a ticket for Belarus versus Gabon. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think anyone's inspired to buy a ticket for that for 20 to 40 quid. Mm. But I do think, you know, if... They've, I mean, they've announced the sales of the England... They've announced what dates or what stadiums England will be playing at. Yeah. I still think they're struggling to sell the tickets. I know we don't know who England are going to be... Uh, sorry, Britain yeah. are going to be playing. Yeah. <laughs> but but, but, but I, let me tell you this, Alex. Let, you see, my view as a football fan is this. I don't care who Great Britain are playing. All I know is they're playing a second or third-rate team from Spain or France or Germany or Brazil. It's, it's a third-rate competition. And on the other one about, you know, you don't think the fans want it because of the European Championships, actually... I don't think a lot of people are going to go to the European Championships in the sort of volumes that we went to Germany and, and, and Portugal because Ukraine and Poland is, yes. is, is not attractive. But, but there will be millions watching it on television in this country and the contrast between seeing some of the world's top players in that tournament to, to going to see, you know, second or third rate players, I think will have a detrimental effect. No, true. I, I think I have to agree with you there. I think, you, you, you know, you're quite right. I mean, I, I don't think it's going to be as much as it was when it was going to Germany. It's not the attractive sort of thing. But, I mean, one, I think, to, to compare it to an example that's what happened recently, when Fulham were qualifying for the European Cup, uh, the UEFA, whatever it's called now, the Euro, Europa League, Europa League. this yeah. year, um, they did really good offers on where it was like, you know, this sort of thing, oh, they pitched it. I mean, me and my mate, I'm not I'm not a Fulham fan, but me and all my mates went down because it was a five or a ticket to get in to see. Yeah. I mean, you're seeing one good side against some side from uh, Belarus that no one's ever heard of, yeah. but we're still seeing some reasonable standard of football for a fiver. Mm -hmm. And I think the, what appealed to us was it was cheaper than the price of going to the cinema, for example, and I'd rather go to the, watch a football match than go to the cinema. And the fact that you could do it for that price, I just think the way they've priced this, at 20 to £120 pounds for a ticket, 
Mate, it's, that's ridiculous. It's scandalous. It is. Yeah, I must say, I, Alex, I, I'm someone who's actually bought some tickets. I mean, look, I'm lucky enough to be covering it yeah. for, for the Daily Mirror, but I, I went for you know, lots of tickets, actually, and ended up with three lots. Women's Beach Volleyball, would, would you believe? Yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, some, if you and buy some, 3,000 times yeah, on different names, yeah. John, you're going to get um, some, um, so Also, some aquatic e e event down at Broxbourne. Mm. And, and specifically, I went, because I'm such a football nut, I went yeah. for, for um, a, a football match at, yeah. at Wembley Stadium. Yeah. Just for the sheer mm. occasion of, of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because I'm a mad football fan, yeah. because I love the Olympics, cover the last mm. three. Mm. And I've got to say, I did actually watch yeah. the Olympic final in 2000. I think Cameroon beat Argentina. Right, I think. Yeah. And, um, uh, and, and I've got yeah. to say, yeah, yeah, listen, uh, it's uh, not Alex, the World Cup final, it's not the Euros, but it's a football sure. match it's and event. it's integrated exactly. with, with, with the Olympics. The Olympics yeah. will be yeah. the greatest event here well, that well, I'll have seen in my you, lifetime. Let me ask you, Alex, are you, are you as, a, as, a, as a Briton, are you thrilled that the Olympics are coming here and that we're going to be the focal point of the world for three weeks or whatever? Yeah, I mean, I think the Olympics as a whole is a great idea, but I just think the problem is that football isn't seen as the pinnacle sport uh, in the Olympics, you know, but... Yeah. It, it's more about it is more about the athletics, the rowing, I the agree. cycling. That's I what totally, I totally agree. By. I mean, they're talking the about is, putting snooker in the Olympics at the next Olympics. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, it's not, I don't yeah. want the Olympics here anyway. Just no. so I'd make that clear. Why, why is that? I, I, it's rubbish having well, it's the Olympics here. It's, oh. the it's, going us, it's, it's going to cost us billions and billions of pounds. The, we'll have a load of decaying stadiums, no, decaying infrastructure no, for, for two decades after this. Mike, Mike. I would have preferred you're to give it to the you're French you're and let them, you know, Mike. tear Paris down Mike. rather than Mike, 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 you're scaremongering. There's not going to be decaying stadiums. Where's the where's the They will decay. They always do. We've got a chance to have a feel-good factor in this country, right? This is the biggest, as John said there, in our lifetime. Yeah. We'll never, ever get a chance to see an event like this again. And it will bring the country but I together. I don't want to see it. it. Will legally... I well, don't want to see it. So you, you don't want to see a magnificent, magnificent sporting event that has so much Most history. people are going to watch on telly anyway. It doesn't matter if it's happening in Argentina no, or whether it's no, happening no, here. No, no, no. Most see, people again, won't go. No, they will. Do you know what Alex, happened, Mike? Alex and Mike. Mike. I'll tell you what will happen is yeah. they will go, even if they've got tickets, they will go to live because there's loads of Olympic parks that are being built in London, around Stratford. Oh. People will go uh, Alex, for the event and to get that feel good. Absolutely, absolutely, Alex, do you live absolutely. in the southeast of England? Yeah, I do. I live, I live on the outskirts of London. But I mean, so I, I disagree and it's, that the stadium is going to be derelict. Look, 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 look at the legacy of Manchester in 2002. Yeah. The Velodrome is still one of the most used things in the world. The city of Manchester Stadium found a new home in Man yeah. City. The, there is development that comes on and the potential to inspire young people by having it in the country. Kids don't want to. Kids in this country would be more inspired, especially kids in London by the Olympics taking place in their own back garden than they would, even though they'll only see it on TV. Mm. The fact that they know it's closer to home will inspire them so much more than seeing it in China or Australia yeah. or Greece. Absolutely. I, yeah. think, I, I do think the legacy, we can't, until we see what the legacy of the Olympics, and yeah. using Manchester as a comparison, I think we'll see a great legacy, and I think it'll be something that will inspire kids for generations and generations. Yeah, I, OK. You wait until your taxi is being held up on the road somewhere in around for London. Three weeks. Because Seth Blatter, who's nothing to do with the Olympics, but is supposed to be some sort of overlord of the sporting world, you know, his massive, great stretch jag limo will be stuck in a, in, in a, in a lane and you can't get past him. You wait till you go for a, a, ho a hotel in London when you want to go and see the theatre. Embrace and, they, and they've trebled the price of the hotel because all these people are coming to watch <laughs> athletics, which is not a British sport. Not a British sport what at all, athletic. Athletics isn't a British no, sport. No, 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 no. It's so, not, Danny not. Thompson, it, Seb Coe, Steve Ovid. Once every four years. Once every that's four what, years. That's what Olympics are. Right, <laughs> listen, <laughs> Alex, 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 we've got to go, mate, but I'm very, very no grateful worries. to you for coming on the show. Fantastic to debate the issues with you. I hope we'll see you up on the Skype no, wall again very right, soon. I'll guarantee Here's you, Alex. right, you're, you're anti Olympics. Yeah. You get a chance to get a ticket to yeah. go to the 100 metre final no. right at Stratford Stadium or the final of the oh. Olympic uh, football. Yeah. You'd be there. I like went to the same event in Atlanta. Georgia and it was the greatest anti-climax of my life. It only lasts oh. 10 seconds, Perry. You <laughs> blink and it's all over. It's gone. Do you agree with me, John? No. no. Right, absolutely okay. not. Well, <laughs> if you <laughs> love your sport, love you love the Olympics. Stay ahead of the game with Sports Tonight Live. Don't miss a thing. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Search for Sports Tonight Live on Facebook and like our fan page. Follow Sports Tonight TV on Twitter and tweet us your thoughts and opinions. Sports Tonight Live, it's the platform for the fans.